Jeremiah chapter 17, 19 to 25, and verse 27. This is what the Lord said to me. Go and stand at the gate of the people, through which the kings of Judah go in and out. Stand also at all the other gates of Jerusalem. Say to them, Hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah, and all people of Judah, and everyone living in Jerusalem who come to these gates. This is what the Lord says. Be careful not to carry a load on the Sabbath day or bring it through the gates of Jerusalem. Do not bring a load out of your houses or do any work on the Sabbath, but keep the Sabbath day holy as I commanded your forefathers. Yet they did not listen or pay attention. They were stiff naked and would not listen or respond to discipline. But if you are careful to obey me, declares the Lord, and bring no Lord through the gates of his city, of the city on the Sabbath, but keep the Sabbath day holy by not doing any work on it, then kings who sit on David's throne will come through the gates of the city with their officials. They and their officials will come riding in chariots and on horses, accompanied by the men of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, and the city will be inhabited forever. But if you do not obey me to keep the Sabbath day holy by not carrying any load as you come to the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle an unquenchable fire, unquenchable fire in the gates of Jerusalem that will consume her fortresses. In Isaiah chapter 56 verse, verses 1 to 8, this is what the Lord says, Maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, the man who holds his past and who keeps the Sabbath without desecrating it and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, The Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And let not any eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who chose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant. To them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve Him, to love the name of the Lord and to worship Him. All who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and who hold pass to my covenant. This I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, He who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. Sabbath rest that God had commanded us to follow on earth is the shadow of the real race that will happen in the future in his kingdom in the earth and in the new heavens by obeying and doing rest every seventh day sabbath gives us a glimpse and test of a kind of life that we shall experience in his kingdom we will not going to do any more work or business to earn a living we do not need to cook to eat the best food that we want. Everything will be provided for us by our Father God, and we will be served by His holy angels. The present Sabbath laws are a test of faith and obedience to God's commands for us. If we will not going to obey God-given Sabbath rest on earth, we have chosen not to receive the eternal Sabbath rest in His kingdom in heavens. Others insisted and teach that Sabbath rest was changed. None in the Holy Bible will support that view. Why? There are four reasons why Sabbath rest cannot be moved or changed. First, it happened already 6,000 years ago. What God did, no man can chance. 
Second, it is a part of the Ten Commandments of God, the external and spiritual law of God. Third, it is holy. No man is authorized to move God made holy days to other unholy days. And fourth, God given Sabbath has something to do with our salvation and eternal joyous, peaceful, and prosperous life in God's kingdom and paradise in the new heavens and new earth. And the day that God made holy, God can only made it holy. No man can make any day holy. The weekly Sabbath race reminds us of the real life of praise on God's kingdom in heavens. No need to work to earn a living and to cook for our favorite food. Everything will be freely provided for us by our Father God and His holy angels will serve us. On the Passover Pascha or God-given Christmas Day, our loving Father gave us the best gift we can ever has. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. It is the real meaning of Christmas when our Lord Jesus Christ voluntarily gave His life for us on the cross of Golgotha for the forgiveness of our sins. The peace of unleavened bread from the first day to the seventh day. Israelites are not allowed to eat bread with yeast. They remove all yeast in their houses on those days. Yeast stands for sins, a sin easily multiplied and entang entangled with other sins. They need to practice not doing any sins for the durations of this peace. If we can do without sins for seven days, why can't we do it continuously? Jesus bought us with His precious life and cleansed us with His holy blood. He owed us, He owned us, and we belong to Him as our Lord and Savior. We need to obey Him always because He is our Lord. He is our Savior. We do not need, we do not own ourselves anymore. And if He is our Lord, we are His slaves. And His slaves do not have right of His own. Whatever His Lord told Him to do, He do it. It will be like that in the kingdom of God in heavens. In Hebrew chapter 8, verse 8 to 12. But God found fault with the people and said, The time is coming, declares the Lord. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, it will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they did not remain faithful to my covenant, and I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will I men teach his neighbor or men his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete, and what is obsolete and egging will soon disappear. Our Lord God Jesus Christ passed over our sins and gave us the gift of eternal life, and it will be forever.